Alright people, welcome back to a brand new video on um, Play Bannerlord. Um, as of recording this, we're at 99 out of 100 subs to this uh, Moscow, so I really appreciate that. With that said, this game uh, just recently, as of last week I believe, came out on Game Pass. So there are a lot of new people that are playing or interested in playing this game, so I decided to make a little guide on how to level up one of the more important skills if you are doing sandbox. That is stewardship. Obviously, if you're playing campaign, you can have your brother, but it, you can still use him to well, use that to help level his stuff up. Or if you put him as a governor, it will help you to level up another quartermaster. With that said, obviously, you start your game. You pick a culture. Um, Empire, that's what I like to do. Because 100% less garrison troop wage. It's helpful, especially late game. When you have a lot of towns or castles, paying them less, like to save more. A minion army brings 25% more influence. Obviously, if you plan to do that, being an army, that's going to help you. Push uh, kingdom policies, recruit armies, declare war, stuff like that. Village herfs increase 20% less, that's not super bad. Resturgence, recruiting and upgrading infantry troops are 25% cheaper. That's uh, obviously if you go for infantry in the playthrough, army lose 20% less daily cohesion. This is good if you're planning to do a lot of armies or keep an army for a long amount of time. 20% uh, more relationship penalty for kingdom decision. Obviously, if part of the kingdom, that might hurt a little. Landians, 5% uh, more now from battles, 10% more income while serving the mercenary, that's helpful. You now it's always good to allow you to rank up your clan tier. Uh, but 50% more income while serving as a mercenary, that's only helpful if you are planning to be only mercenary. Or uh, if not, it will help you when you are a mercenary. So it's not great, but it's something. 10% uh, production points to villages that are bound to castles. That's good, but nothing great. Putting lowest armies cost 20% more influence. That's hurtful if you are, again, planning to do more army stuff because that 20% influence stacks up. Azerai, everyone's at 30% cheaper to build, 10% less trade penalty. This is good if you are planning to have a lot of caravans or do a lot of trading. No speed penalty in the desert, again, only works in Azerai territory. Uh, daily wages and true party are increased by 5%. That is... sucks, because you have a bigger troop, now wages go higher, pay less. Who's that? It's recruiting and upgrading mounted troops. 10% cheaper, again, it's only if you're going for mounted troops. But it does help with amount, because let's say you were trying to get noble, noble sons, because they, they're normally 200, now uh, they're 180, so you can look a little bit more. 25% bonus uh, reproduction to horses, mules, cows, and sheep in the villages owned by crusade rulers. Mm, not really awesome. 20% less income from towns. That's one fifth less money. So that's 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 pretty bad in my opinion. Britannians, 50% less speed penalty and 15% rate uh, side range bonus of horse. Really, really awesome. A lot of people say it's the best. It is if you're trying to Obviously, uh, catch or get away from people. Town owned by Britannia rulers have plus one militia production. Really good because militia don't cost money because they well you don't pay wages and they don't eat food. So really good, but they are crap in terms of fighting. Uh, and ten percent slow build rate for town projects and settlements. That is hurtful, but not super bad. I'm going empire because. 100% less garrison troop wages and being an army. Influence. Also, if you're in sandbox, depending which culture you choose, will excuse me, put you in that region. If you campaign, it'll put you somewhere else. Let's make so many choices. Just throw a weird random. The meta, excuse me, going as small and as skinny. I like to make a build because this just looks weird. Please build. Um, God, just make it look like a little more of a like Viking. Yeah, 
better. And my favorite scar is this. I'll get him different eyebrows. Some clothes. There we go. I wish I could just run around like samurai thing. Um, for here, family, you pick whatever you want. I'm gonna go for uh, mainly bow. I'm, I used to do a lot of horse bow or horse archery. But this one, I'm gonna do a little less of that. I just do foot archer. Boom. I actually want to go with tra if you are the best start is road with scouts because you get a boat. You have a horse, so it'll allow you to cheese the bandit or a little party is easier. Here we'll go. Look at arm in the battle because you get that 20 arena now. It's a lot more than obviously 10, you know, 05. But that determines what kind of playthrough you're gonna have. Uh, if you are starting sandbox, you'll be able to pick your age. If you are in campaign, you'll have different options. But we'll do 30 of age. Go more Roman. Isos. Scared of the Uh, oh, that's not good enough. Then we'll go for you, Buru. That's to you what you want to choose. So now let's actually get into it. So if you click, I want controller. Well, Xbox, but I have mouse and keyboard. But then, but go to your skills and you click on those two pluses. It will tell you like what this ability does, or what the skill does, and how to learn it. Some of it is not as clear. So to truly get uh, as much stewardship as possible, you want to have as many troops as possible with as many different variety of foods. There's nine food types. Not nine food types, so there's nine different foods. You want to have all nine types with as many people as you have. That will give you the most uh, amount of XP. Obviously, also having focus points will help. So we'll just throw to you. I like to put at least one in medicine because this perk, in my opinion, is the best. Throw two. Get out of this. Right. Here. So, for stewardship, it obviously depends on what you want to do because you can have it for yourself. It's also good for a good governor. I like to do party wages are 5% less. Absolutely painless. You can also do party consumes 10 percent less food, pretty good. Actually, that might be better for some. Might actually start picking up more just because no more opportunity from having a single food tap will help you have this higher. And there are some perks that the more you have of uh, party morale, the better. Second perk is drill sergeant or seven veteran for yourself. I'll go for drill sergeant. All troops gain plus two XP. Governor. Seven veterans will be because that one militia per day is helpful. For 75, reduce push consumption while the arm by 10%, garrison which decreased by 20% for castles or switch shop. Personally, I go switch shops. Workshops own more money, CG and if you're doing CGs as you are the quartermaster helps. Governor, obviously this one, yes. It's not a governor perk. For 100, you can go doing Village raids, you get additional food each. Food item you eat for each one you loot. Troop wages decrease by 15 while in the army. Or paid in promise. I pick paid in promise because companion wages and equipment fees are between 4%. Not that great, but discard, discard the armors. Can be donated to troops for increased experience. Helpful if you're doing a lot of war so you lose a lot of people. You can use that to get, get them higher tier. For 125, I'll go giving hands. Discard of weapons can be donated to troop for increased experience and tariff comes 10% higher. Um, you can go logistician if you are maybe for governor, maybe also pick three hands. Ooh, 150, then that'd be with A corpse or relocation. Mm, honestly, none of those do look too amazing. 175 morale bonus from having the race food is doubled or cost of getting units decreased by 10%. Useful consumption of parties doing siege by 10%. The, the siege 
not great. I probably go Sun Reserve because if again if I'm fighting a lot, I might lose a lot of troops. So plus pay, plus money I have to pay for upgrade might be better. Contractors or horse labor. I'm doing a lot of fighting with regular troops, obviously forced labor, mercenaries, go contractors. For a governor, I'll go for town projects that seem some more effective for contractors. Horse 225, Renico's horses or Renico's mules. I go for Renico horses. 10% increase carrying capacity for troops and trade penalty for months are So I have more troops. So none of those two are really amazing. Uh, for 250 master planning or uh, master warcraft for governor hmm. honestly none of those two amazing but for governor i'll go master planning continuous projects for settlements are 20 percent more effective because once you have the town or castle fully built you're going to pick a continuous project so that's going to be a little more effective and then 275 pick party food consumption wages and common morale was decreased by point Five percent per scale of above two hundred and fifty. Governing town uh, tax revenue increase by point five per scale of above two hundred. Last one is for the governor. But that's gonna help you get a lot of troops. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time, recruit a bunch of troops, uh, get some food, do a little fighting so you guys can see how much it helps or how much it levels up once I have a amount of troops and good amount of food. So I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back guys. I got um, some uh, grain, five, five of uh, each of others. Obviously, some of it is a little expensive. That's actually not by five, it's by like one of each. TV is expensive. But we have what, six out of nine? So you can see we have one steward show. One more, so we get some taps. Obviously, if you have the more, books points we get more. So it's 0 out of 41. Let's wait for the day. Oh, that's a quest I can do. So it's 0 out of 41. Um, boom. As you can see, we got 7 skill points in steward show. We're now rank 8. Got a good amount. We almost got 8 levels. Or eight uh, points, or well, because we had a bunch of different foods, and you can still see we have majority of it. Right? Obviously, if we get like thirty troops, forty troops, it's gonna give us more and more. That's what you do to get a lot of it, you know. Uh, but don't forget, you don't want to sit here all day because obviously you want to have money to pay with your troops and to um, buy the food. So I spend a little time, let me get some more money, let me get some more troops, and I'll be back when I have around I don't know, 50 troops or so. See you in a second. Alrighty, awesome people, we're back. It took me a bit of time, I have 10k, which is not a huge amount, but I got to clan tier 1, you can see, just recently, and I got to 47 troops. Yes, I have some upgraded troops, but it doesn't, I don't think it matters for what they tier just that amount. But if I'm wrong, do let me know. And I'm sorry if I am wrong, but we're in the Picardia and we will buy a bunch of food. You can see I have some, but I didn't buy it. I got it from a buddy. There's nine food tribe. Food. Food. Grain, fish, butter, cheese, meat, beer, grape, olive, olives, uh, and date food. So we're going to buy uh, at least five. Let us make it ten. Afford to. I have at least eight food is the lowest one, but I'll go to a different city and on the way we'll see how much XP we're gonna get. So, with stewardship 11, I'm gonna pump it up to nine and a half, and throw in skill po uh, attribute points. So, we have 10 times, right? So, at 92 out of 206 at 11 skill points. So well, let's quickly say, let's go to um, Omar, for example. If there is some food over there. So we're going to speed it up and we'll see how we're at 11 skill points on her uh, 
Then we got 14. 14. So we went from 11 to 2, uh, 25. So we're going to put my cost to reduce that helps but we're gonna pick this the so food is now three or four days boom we already got 14 points and as you seen before we had less people obviously not as much food but we still got a good amount of XP uh, okay let's buy some late foods a little good on beer Jeez, I'm blind. <laughs> yeah. Boom, we got a good amount. Now let's go to another town of Barchag. And in between, you'll see how much we get. Obviously, we're not going to get hundreds. But you can get a good amount each time. And as more people you get, with all nine different food types, or foods, the more you're going to get. Oh, boom, we got seven. Still should twice as less, but uh, still pretty good. See, obviously it gets more. We have, let's say, like, a crap ton of intel. We would, uh, I think I maxed out at 10 or 11 uh, times learning rate. So, with this, we can get up to 175 pretty easy. Right? That is going to be a little harder to push. That's all you do. Right? That's, that's how you level up your stewardship pretty decently easy. Um... If you want to learn or see how to level up different skills or hold a different set of skills like one handed, two handed pole arm, your control skills, stuff like that, do let me know down in the comments. I really hope this helped you out. I really, really do. And if it did, do let me know down in the comments. You know, help me out by liking, subscribing commenting uh, the goal of this month is to get to 100 subs and we're at 99 as of this recording out of 100 i really hope you help me out to reach that if we break that i'll be speechless <laughs> so again i hope you all enjoy this i hope you learned something new uh, and with that said hope you had a good one and i'll see you in the next one bye bye